What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got some more fantastic entitled parent stories for you. No, my hamster is not a toy. Backstory. This happened last weekend when my niece, the occasional entitled kid, came for a sleepover. I love my niece. She is sweet and more reasonable as she is growing older. She's nine years old now. But from time to time she has her moments. No wonder since she is spoiled by her parents and grandparents. I got my fur baby in October this year as my little mental support and I'm really protective over him. Since hamsters are nocturnal, I always follow his sleep needs and try not to wake him up during the day unless he wakes up by himself for his own businesses. All right, let's take a look at this little fur baby. How cute is this going to be? Um, <laughs> it doesn't get much cuter than that. I can't lie. Uh, yeah, I've always loved hamsters. This one is no different. Chapter one, first meeting. My niece came Friday evening screaming, where is he? Show him to me. And my hamster was already running in his wheel. So I took him out on my shoulder and went after my niece as soon as she saw him she started to run away screaming to put him away she fears all animals because of my sister's mother-in-law now that is a different story i say to her don't be ridiculous he won't hurt you put him away put him away tears start to collect in her eyes i have him on my shoulder he won't come near you so calm down my entitled grandma gets involved what is the deal he is small i try coming closer but my entitled niece starts to cry no I roll my eyes and go to fetch his whole home, putting him inside so she can watch. She watches him through the plastic top and then I took him out on the couch. My entitled niece ended up on the other side of the room. After five minutes, she came closer and closer till she was next to the couch. I gave him a big nut so he was eating and I told and showed the entitled niece to pet him. He is a sweetheart and he lets people do anything to him while he's eating. So my entitled niece dared to pet the hamster. It ended up in a huge aww. Chapter 2, it slowly starts. Saturday came. My entitled niece was bothering me the whole day that she wants to pet him again. I told her and tried to explain to her that he will wake up in the evening, late night, that she has to wait. I also told her that if he wakes up during the day, I will call her. Of course, he didn't and she was impatient. When the evening came, she was knocking on the door every hour and of course, he was sleeping or at least he tried to. He probably woke up from the constant knocking and maybe that was the reason he did not wake up until 3 a.m. Chapter 3. Enter the entitled grandma. My entitled niece was upset in the morning that she didn't get to see my fur baby again. I told her that he woke up, but it was already too late and she was sleeping. But my entitled grandma said, go and fetch the dang hamster and show it to the niece. No, he is sleeping. It's daytime. But she just said, so what? Just wake him up. He is not a toy. He is a living creature with his own needs. I started to get angry now. I'll just wake him up for a bit and your niece can just look at him through the plastic top. He won't stay out. He'll go back to sleep in his nest, which is under the first floor, so it's not possible to see him. You could just keep him feeding so I could pet him. I look at them both dumbfounded. No, and no, I won't wake him up for entertainment and I won't overfeed him just so someone can pet him. My entitled niece went home angry and disappointed. My entitled grandmother annoys me every day since then, saying that I should have shown your niece to dang hamster to make her happy. I'm still telling her that he is not a toy and that he is my fur baby. But my grandma just ironically giggled and made a snarky remark. Poor hamster. She said that because I don't spoil my entitled niece. And that makes me a horrible mother in her eyes. I was forced to buy a lock on my door as prevention because I have to work every weekend till the end of this year. I had to make sure that if my entitled niece should ever stay over for a sleepover again, she won't bother my baby during this time. I feel like this problem probably arises when pet stores advertise hamsters and other pets as toys for little kids. They're not really though, are they? They're animals. But I feel like because of this, a lot of people just see them as throwaway pets when really they take a lot of effort. Like my family have had a lot of hamsters in the past and yeah, they're super cute and small, but they are quite hard work. Obviously not on the same level as a dog or cat even, but you wouldn't wake your dog up in the middle of the night to pet him, would you? So think the same way about hamsters. Moving on to our second story. Entitled parents demand that my dad tell them where the Mona Lisa is. This story is from a couple years back and was told to me by my dad. I decided that it might fit in here. So my dad traveled
travels all over the world for his job. I'm talking China, Spain, Belgium, all sorts of countries. Mainly, it's in Europe. Despite him being American and traveling all around the place, he can completely adapt to a country to the point where he seems like a native citizen. Nobody knows if he's a tourist and some tourists mistake him for an actual citizen. In short, you could say that he's a citizen of the world. This is important for later. Well, even though he probably has an American accent, no one can tell. Okay. This story takes place in Paris, France. My dad has been busy since he had arrived, but he has now had enough time to go to the Louvre. Everyone knows the Louvre as being the museum that holds the Mona Lisa, but there's also countless other beautiful masterpieces inside. This actually wasn't the first time my dad had been, and he honestly was in no hurry to see the famous painting. He told me that the area where the Mona Lisa was kept was almost always packed with all these Japanese guys pushing their way in front to take pictures. I can confirm I saw it firsthand. Plus, he hated crowds. While he was admiring some of the art, he felt a tap on the shoulder. What my dad saw once his attention was directed to the tap were two morbidly obese parents and their equally obese son playing on a Game Boy. At this part, I literally had to ask him if he was exaggerating, but he wasn't. Do you know where the Mona Lisa is? The father asked my dad in this really thick southern accent. Apologies for that. Now, my dad knows exactly where it is, but he knew that these people weren't planning on admiring any artwork other than the Mona Lisa because of the popularity. My dad has a little pet peeve for that. So he looked at the family and simply stated no anglais, which was a way for someone to say they didn't speak English in French. This was what sparked a trash show. No, what? Do you think he can understand us? Mommy, I want to see the Mona Lisa now. My dad instantly was about to walk away when the mom grabbed him by the wrist. You have to know where the Mona Lisa is. Mona Lisa. My baby has been so excited to see it. The kid was now throwing a tantrum while my dad honestly didn't know what to do. Fortunately, there's such a thing as security in places like these and the Louvre security came over to see what the deal was. After settling everyone down, the family was escorted to the direction of where the Mona Lisa was and my dad now had this story to tell. Anticlimactic, but personally, I think that it's better to have it end like this than have it end up destructive considering where exactly this happened. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That could have been millions and millions of pounds worth of damage if one of the entitled guys there would have got a little bit physical. Fair play to your dad though, I do totally agree with him. I don't really appreciate art that much, but I wouldn't just go to a famous gallery just to go and see one painting because I knew it was really famous. I bet these entitled people are the sort of people that would go for about five minutes, put it all over their Instagram and leave. But yeah, I totally get what your dad's saying. That sort of stuff does annoy me as well. Now for our final story, I'm entitled to park in your driveway. My mother lives near Chicago and I go home to visit for Christmas about seven years ago. Since I work from home anyway, network engineer with long hours, and my uncle works from home a few miles from my mother's, I arranged to work out of his house because of the internet slash quiet factor. I arrive as the local elementary school is starting and it's chaos. I mentioned this to him and he goes into a frustrated vent. See, my uncle lives directly across the street from the new elementary school in a rapidly expanding once small town where an influx of Chicago people are moving. Parents can't be bothered to walk their kids to school from just a few blocks, nor use the circle drive like they should. No, they drive to school and park in the street slash driveways of my uncle's house and his neighbors. Since my uncle works from home, this generally isn't a huge hassle, but on the rare occasion he wants to leave, he will find his car blocked in because someone is parked in his driveway or on the street blocking the driveway. They had torn up grass by parking a skew of the driveway slash curb, damaged his mailbox multiple times, and worst of all, for anyone in the north you understand this, they would drive across his driveway multiple times during snow before he could shovel, causing hours of chipping, packed down snow and ice off his driveway. Ugh. All because they were entitled to park on his property. So I hear all this. It's winter and at the time I was still a smoker. I park my car in the middle of the street slash curb, preventing the usual two cars from parking in front of his house, sheltering his mailbox. Next, I stand on the driveway about a foot away from the sidewalk. Multiple cars pause, seem to think it over and drive several houses down and park and shoot me dirty looks from the opposite side of the street as they are forced to walk half a block to the elementary school. Again, I have no idea why they couldn't use the circle drive purposely intended for drop-off. 
Day two, I'm standing on the driveway like an entitled parent scarecrow, smoking and minding my own business, checking emails on my phone, etc. This older lady, and in fact, she could have been a grandma because she seemed too old to have a kindergarten age child, marches up to me and starts screaming in my face. How dare I block her from taking her precious child to school? She starts ranting and raving how I am a punk butted kid and she's going to kick my butt, throwing in a couple of curse words for good measure. I blink and respond, why don't you watch your language? There are children present? I'm not blocking you in any way. I'm just preventing you from parking in a driveway that does not belong to you. The entitled mum went as far as complaining to school security who came over for a chat with me. The school had been getting complaints non-stop from my uncle's neighborhood about the issue. Parents have been told multiple times not to park at the houses. He was very amused. The same mum attacks me on day three, calling me some punk kid and yelling at me from preventing her from taking precious child to school. I just stare at her levelly and don't respond. Always the best response. I go back inside and relay the story to my uncle who is dying laughing. Mainly because at the time, I had a nine and six year old children of my own. I was in fact not a punk kid, but a 33 year old mother of two. I suggested to my uncle that he invest in those accordion style anti-tire devices they use in law enforcement and put them on his side of the sidewalk and wait for someone to pull into his driveway and flatten all their tires. He didn't think it was such a good idea, but I totally would have done it if it were my house. See, I like you, OP. You're my sort of person. I just don't understand why people think that they need to park right there. Like, it's a two-minute walk. Just park somewhere else. I feel like what you are doing is exactly what your uncle and his neighbors should also be doing. Like, clearly, the school's not getting involved. The local council's not getting involved. It's time for you to take justice into your own hands. Yeah, perhaps flattening their tires is a little far, but something along those lines I think would be perfect. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash entitled parents i really hope you've enjoyed it if you have drop a like comment and subscribe to the channel we are so close now to 250,000 subscribers if you want more content from me the video on screen now is an absolute cracker so click it and i will see you over there in a few seconds